Hello there and welcome to Sir Nick's Roundtable Chat. To kick off the series, I'm joined by arguably the greatest golfer ever to have played the game. So sit back and enjoy my chat with the man who introduced and inspired me to become a golfer. The Golden Bear, Jack Nicholas. But I've got to tell the story. We were meant to start at 12 and it's still quarter to 12. So I'm in the bath next door and they're banging on the door and saying, and I'm like, I'm in the bath, you know, because I've got a bad back, trying to get my back ready. And I walk around the corner and Jack's already sitting in the chair ready to go. So first question is, have you ever been late on the tee in all your years? Um, 1953. I was 13 years old playing the USGA Juniors. <laughs> okay. At, in Southern Hills, and I was first off the tee at seven o'clock, uh-huh. playing Stanley Ziabrowski. My goodness, I, I remember this. Memory. How about I remember this? this like it was yesterday. How we go? This is great. And I walked up on the tee about thirty seconds before my starting time, uh-huh. and Joe Dye was there. Okay, he says, he, "Young man, you're he, late." You, no, no, he didn't say oh. late. He says, "Young man, thirty seconds later, you would have been one down on the second tee. Oh, you okay. need to come early on your starting time and be ready to play." So I've never missed a starting so, time. So technically once, never. Once, once Joe, well, no, I never missed it. Yeah. But Joe Dye was, he in turn up to be like a second father to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. The wonderful true. guy. Yeah. But he was very stern. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, he was Mr. Golf in, in, in those days. And yeah. So anyway, so, yeah, I, I, lear- I learned early. I got within four seconds, I think. I was in Madrid and jet lag and what have you, and was like a lunatic running around. Anyway, so I never was late on the tee. Um so I wanted to go straight into, you can have your career from 1962 to 1986, your 72 wins, your 18 majors, your 19 seconds, da da da, da. You, can, you can have that era. You made five and a half million dollars in, in your, for your 72. You really killed him, didn't For your 72 wins, <laughs> yeah. And Scotty Scheffler got five and a half million for his pip, whatever the pip is. And I didn't even see a tweet. So, or, or you can start... 10 years later, 96, and you play for however long you want to play t- against Tiger, and then we will have the undisputed who is the greatest. Or you can start now, next year, 2023, with 72 wins, majors and blah, 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 blah. You would have won, minute with you'd won a couple of pips, you know, 10 pips in a row. You'd have won half a dozen FedEx Cups. You'd have won minimum of $500 million. Well, Take yeah. your choice. Which box? <laughs> Got three choices. I don't three. really, I don't really care, Nick. Okay. You know, I mean, during my era, I did what I did. Uh, you know, I, I won a few tournaments, uh, few. and and you know, uh, it, there wasn't much money in it at those yeah, times. Right. We thought it was money then. Yeah, that's right. And uh, then, uh, then 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 sort of Tiger's era came along, and you know, my retirement from the PGA Tour, I think, was two hundred thirty-seven thousand dollars. Tigers will be over a hundred million. Uh, the uh, uh, you know my lifetime earnings probably, including both tours, yeah, is probably about maybe seven and a half, eight million. Seven, I don't yeah, know, I know, yeah, something like that. And I mean, those guys, ten guys make that much every year. I know year. they're spending that on their jet fuel a every year. Every year, now. yeah. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot to be said for today's era. Yeah, I know. But uh, I wouldn't have. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't, knew. I, I knew that would be the answer. I did. But I did. Wouldn't obviously, trade what I did. Yeah, I but, loved it. And you obviously playing with Arnold and Gary, and you being the big three, and heading around the world. Going, you must have gone to some crazy places oh, growing yeah. the game of but golf. Let me, Tell let me us. finish the other part. Sure. You know, the game of golf we played was because we loved the sport. Absolutely. We never played it for money. Absolutely, money was was a side thing. That because we won at the golf course, then we could use our had our name to be able to go make a living. Today, yeah. the guys make a living on the golf course, oh, yeah. which we didn't. I'm sorry, I interrupted your question. No, 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 no. I, I, I agree a hundred percent. You play for trophies. I mean, that's the most important right. thing to you. What, what you got on the sideboard, and you have got some incredible, incredible, <laughs> incredible sideboards. Um, so I really, I, we should really jump if you're talking money. I don't want to jump straight to live, but you know, it's okay. It's it's such such a big question, and everybody wants you to answer it because you know that is for me. I'm sh- all about the money. I mean, you play one tour, you play the PGA tour, all the other world tours because exactly what we talked about. You want trophies, you want your name on some historic events to be able to say, "Oh, I won at certain golf courses. I won Jack's event. I may won Arnold's event. I, I won on some famous golf courses." Obviously, you want to win majors, um, and for me, it's 
the other tour is just simply you're just bored to just to go and play and go and perform. Well, yes and no. Okay. Uh, you know, I don't fault the guys uh, that have gone to live. No, I agree with that. I agree with that. Yeah, and, and what I don't fault, you know, I, I, you got to understand that in the United States, we start out, uh, and, you know, guys come from other countries to come to the States, but we start out with junior golf, high school golf, college golf, mm -hmm. amateur golf, secondary tourists that work their way to the major tour. Yeah. There's a loyalty factor going all the way up. I agree. And yeah. you've earned your way through competition to get there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I like that. Me too. Uh, and the guy, kids from kids from South Africa, kids from Australia, those kids were turning pro when they're 16, 17 mm -hmm. years old. Yeah. Because they they couldn't that they had to make a living. Yeah, I started. I mean, I Cam Smith, for instance. I don't know Cam very well, but. He, I've been told he says I don't really care that much about playing golf, but I'm pretty good at it. But but I can make a lot of money at it. Mm, yes, yeah, different attitude. And I, and I don't know whether I'm correct yeah, or yeah, not. Yeah. But you know, if that's his attitude, that's okay. And the guys from South Africa, you you look at uh, Brandon Grace and Schwartzel, uh, and I, I, I don't know whether any other ones or not. But you know, they turned pro at a very young age. They didn't have the loyalty. To what goes on here so the opportunity comes along for them to make money now they had to make mm. their choice mm -hmm. they have to make their choice between playing golf for a very short period of time which which, which is live tour will be mm. and and making a lot of money and putting money away for their family mm -hmm. Ustazen was the other one mm -hmm. and uh putting a lot of money away for their family or do they have the loyalty and be able to play golf through regular golf then the senior tour and on into retirement yeah those other guys won't have the senior tour no they, 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 no, they're right. It's a quick hit. It's, it's a quick it's, hit. It's, it's do you think? And, and, and that's their call. Yeah. And I, I don't fault that, but I, uh, I think it's, I don't think it's been good for the game of golf. Mm -hmm. I think the PGA Tour was forced to react, and 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 up their purses mm. in a way that they ultimately would have gotten there anyway. But I don't, I don't like the way we've all, we've really automatically created a secondary tour within mm. the main tour. Mm. Yeah. We've actually created another layer. Yeah, absolutely. And so. Uh, I don't like that, but it's, uh, you know, times change. Mm. And what was, it was no different than I won whatever I won, seven and a half million dollars my whole life, and these guys are winning several hundred million. Mm. You know, times change. Oh, sure. We're, so you so you move and go with the times. Yeah. And, uh, but I was, I was part of the start of the PGA Tour. Mm -hmm. Arnold Gardner Dickinson and I started... That that we we revolted from the PGA Tour itself, mm -hmm. so a little bit of, of what, mm. what's going on today, uh, but we we never we we didn't eliminate the PGA Tour. Mm. I mean PGA, we brought we kept the PGA involved, we kept them involved in things. But they're part of our policy board, they're part of everything else, and so, uh, but it, it it allowed us to make more of our own decisions individually, and uh, I think that the tour today. Uh, is 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 doing a little bit what the PGA did back at the other thing, but they but they but they're so good at what they do, mm. and they raise enough money oh, for yeah. for all the players. I mean, they're not raising LIV money, but they're raising uh, a lot of money. Oh, I mean, it's pretty serious now. It's isn't it? pretty serious. It's wow. very good. Yeah. So you know, I think the PGA Tour has done a wonderful job. Yeah. I think Jay Monahan's done a great yeah. job, and uh, uh, you know, I think I think the PGA Tour is in good hands. Uh, what the LI yeah. LIV will come out, I think a lot depends on court issues and how they uh, mm. that's handled. Yeah, but you know, we'll see. But I'm a, I'm, I I'm a staunch supporter. I just jump in one more thing. I, I can't see how there's any negotiation when they've come in so boldly no. and put four events at the end of the season. You know, two in August, two in September in America. I mean, that is that's pretty bold, isn't it? Well. You know, I, I really, yeah, I guess that is. I didn't really pay yeah. much attention to that. Yeah. But it's, it, it's, 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 it's money trying to buy the game. Yeah. That's it's it. trying, it's trying to buy respectability. Mm. And you know, I, I don't think that uh, that is really what it's all no. about. No. Uh, I think that the, uh, I think that uh, somebody from Europe. Basically, said the big thing is they're trying to buy the ability to sit on the 
veranda at Augusta National <laughs> and have simple mint julep <laughs> with the membership and be accepted. <laughs> Good luck. And that's well, that's what yeah. that's what that's what yeah. they're trying yeah. to do. Yeah. It's it's getting acceptability within yeah. in the in the within the. Yeah. Uh, the mainframe of the game of golf. Yeah. All right, your memory's so good. I'm going to take you back. Next year will be 50 years since I went to my first Open at Troon, and that is where we first met. Obviously, you remember it well. Oh, I can't. How can I forget it? <laughs> 50 years. Let's see. That's not 50 years. So this is my story, which, sure. is, which, is, which is Troon. 73, yeah. okay. 73, my wise copy. Oh, I love your story. He likes my story. I... I we get to the so I got to tell my story again. So I'm a young kid. I'm 16 years old now. This is my first open. Dad drove me up there, and I love to sit on the back of the practice ground and just watch. So I'm watching Jack and Arnold, you know, Gary and Lee, and Johnny and and Tom Weisskopf for one. And I went round the back off the range. I went to we, you know your Porter Johns in America. They call them ugly toilets back in Britain. Mm -hmm. Big green thing. And I, before I get to go in, over the fence from the hotel, jumps Jack. Comes over to whatever, avoid whatever to get to the range quicker, but to go to the restroom quicker. Comes over the fence right in front of me, and I'm only one around, and I just stood there in shock. You went into the Porter John's, did your thing, come out. We didn't shake hands. I said hi, you said hi, and off you went, right? So there I am, 16-year-old lad, and I walked in there and I looked at these ugly urinals, as they're called, the silver things, you know, the troughs all the way around. And I said to myself, well, I can't play like Jack yet, but I can sure whittle where he's whittled. <laughs> so I went all the way around. I hadn't heard that part of the story. <laughs> yeah, I remember. You said whittled when I told you the story. The whittled. So I, I got a fast track to... Uh, <laughs> I love it. That was our very first meeting. But in all seriousness, so I mimicked your swing and Arnold. You know, you're the fade, Arnold's the draw, Lee's the fade, Gary's the draw. So when I went back to Welling Garden, that's what I did. So about 10 years ago, I was interviewing you again. And I thought I was special. I thought I was the only one that could do that. And then you suddenly said, oh, I spent the weekend with Sam Sneed. And then I copied Sam's swing, went off and won the tournament. So... You know, visualization, it was so important and copying I people. That, I think that's how kids learn. Yeah. You learn from others. You learn from uh, copying. You learn from, as I learned from Sneed with his rhythm. I go. learned from yeah. Hogan, never turn the left hand over. Yeah. I learned from Boris in a very He's, long, loose played with Nelson, loose you said swing. as well. Nelson, Nelson, I couldn't do it. It's too, too much hip shift for it's, me. It's slide. Uh, but, you know, you, you learn, you watch, and you imitate. mm and I'm sure that's it's what you did. You're, well, you're a good exactly. athlete. Absolutely. You're a good athlete. I was a good athlete. Yeah. And we, when you're a good athlete, you can do those things. Yeah. If you're not a good athlete, then you have a hard time. You, you get too mechanical. Yeah. And I think I think being able to do other things with your golf swing is, uh, uh, I, I think it was magical for well, me. Well, yeah. And I don't think kids, I don't know if they today... I, I sense today they don't do that as much because it, they're kind of a little afraid. Of, could I say if you can't do something, I say jokingly to amateurs, if you can't do something, you never have and never will, copy somebody, put somebody in front of you, pretend you're somebody else. It's, it's amazingly powerful, isn't it? And especially for young oh. kids. You know, I, I saw a great article, you know, with, like if you can't sing or, or speak, you've got to go and sing on stage. Well, just pretend who's your favorite pop artist or pretend you're her or him. And he, it's a wonderful way to learn our game, isn't Absolutely. it? Mimic people, Absolutely. copy the tempos of, of, of everybody else. Um, it was about 10 years ago, I was invited. We were both up in, I was invited to come to Canada. We, were, we, did, a, we did a charity gig for a hospital, didn't we? Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to interview you just like this. It was the first time I ever done this with you. And so I wanted to tell my story, you know, so how I started, you know, 71 through television, and then we met, you know, all that through the years. And then we played our first Ryder Cup at 1977 at Lytham. Uh -huh. And so pre preceding that, I was also talking about Jack's mental strength and how he has his great ability to forget things. You know, he's never three-putted in the back nine of a major. That's what you, you know, you would say. That's what you thought. Ball may miss, but I didn't cause it to miss. You know, you've got this great, powerful, <laughs> yeah, great. Don't want, don't want to do that. It's bad time to three putt. Yeah. <laughs> great mental strength. 
So I go rattling on and say how, you know, after six, playing six, I played you and Ray Floyd second round at Leatham and uh, with, with Peter Isthouse, my partner, and we beat you two and one. And you looked at me and you went, did we? Did we play it? And I said, yeah, Jack, it's all right, Jack. I know about this power, this mental strength for getting things, but it's me, Jack. You know, we're buddies. You know? <laughs> and you go, don't remember it. I said, don't remember very, there very many things there, that I lost. But I have, it's so funny. I, I'll, I'll leap in. I was with Brad Faxon this week, and he, he beat me in the Valderrama for Ryder Cup, and I couldn't remember that one. I delete, you delete. You. Uh. Anyway, so I thought it was quite funny. I turned to the, to the audience, and I said, ladies and gentlemen, this is the man that introduced me, inspired me. And I looked at her, Jack. I said, "You bastard!" <laughs> you see, you know, I did a I did an interview with BBC prior to uh, the Open at uh, was that Turnberry? I can't remember what year it was, but uh, just the one in the Sun, you know, no, against no, no, Tom no, Watson. But, no, but no, I was doing an interview, and the guy yeah. the guy gets me and says, "Okay, Jack, now I want to set the stage. What do you remember oh. about 1977 Seven, oh, yeah. and the Duel in the Sun?" I said. I lost. I lost. Boom. Done. Boom. Done. I was done. Yeah. I mean, I could care less what 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 yeah. else I did. Yeah. You know, I remember a couple of shots at it, but you asked me about the '86 Masters. I can give you every shot, yardage, and everything else. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We we remember all our good stuff. You remember stuff. when you win. You don't. Yeah. You, you want to get rid of what you lose. Yeah. Absolutely. But that's a mental. You know, that is incredible mental strength. Did you did you develop that, or did it kind of just by playing a lot? It it just. I just enjoyed remembering what I did well. I kind of sense we came from the era where we didn't have scientists, psychologists, training, you know, no. analyzing what we did. We just hit golf balls and went and played. That's right. We had fun when I was in the tower, TV tower with Terry Gann that one day when we started talking about shaping shots. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I asked you about your 16th hole at Muirfield Village. Pin was front left, water's left. And I said, Jack, how would you play that one? And he said, well, in the middle of green and just turn it in and you hit the draw. And I was like sitting in my seat thinking, what? You know, because we had always gone with the other way. You aim at the hazards and work it away from the hazard. And then I chatted with Brad Faxon this week. And I believe it came from when you first started playing at Sayota Club. Out of bounds was on the right everywhere. Every hole. Every hole OB right. Now, you would have thought we would have been taught well, you aim at that and you hook it off it. But you know, you decided to aim left going I, left. I've never aimed at a water hazard or a, 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 a out of bounds and, and pulled the ball away from it. Really? You, you I always, always aimed out, out, out the wrong side of it. I mean, like the 11th and Augusta. give you more space, yeah. I always aim at the right edge of the green. If I turn it a little bit there, I know I can't turn it all the way across yeah, the green. Okay. And I'm all right. Uh, but, you know, I've always felt like and I was, I was one of my principals when I was younger. You never, never aim the ball in jail. Okay. And you went the other way. You, you went the other way. Go away from it. So I I'll, make a, note, I'll make a note of that. Nick, right. Nick, you did it wrong. <laughs> All those years. So you went absolutely the other way. Absolutely that is amazing. The other way. Yeah. But then the, but the fade came, let's talk golf a little bit. The fade came quite easy because I, you know, we study the golf swing. And I obviously think, I think the way we can rotate our arms means we can either draw it. We have a very comfortable hit in a draw because we rotate our arms and we're comfortable. We're not fearing either, that. You could either one. Yeah, or you, your arms do, your forearms don't rotate. And well, then you hit the I fade. Still, I still rotate with a fade. Yeah, they do a little bit. Yeah, I agree. They, they, they could have a little natural yeah. bit, but to hit a real draw, you, you give it a bit more of a rollover. A little you, bit. You know. but yeah, basically, I didn't really do a whole lot. When I wanted to hit a draw, I just closed the club face slightly. Yeah, yeah simple as that. And aim to the right, and then just encourage the club to go. Yeah. If I hit a fade, I went ahead and just made sure that I had my, my which I had most of the time anyway, was a fairly weak grip. Yeah. Club face slightly open. Now I can hit it as hard as I want. There's yeah. no way it's going to go left. Yeah, swing away. So I swing away and make sure I release it, get, release yeah. it well. Yeah. With the open face, then the ball will go up and fall right. Yeah. And so that's the way I learned how to play. And, and Jack Grout, the fellow who taught me, Jack always said, he says, you want to play a fade, you know, the way you would play it from the inside, shallow, and with mm. power. Mm -hmm. If you if you're playing a fade with like a slice, oh yeah, cross it, yeah. Then you yeah. then you're gonna lose no. distance, yeah. and you're you know yeah. you're just you're just not gonna yeah. keep the ball going going forward very much. Did you ever the back of the ball? Obviously, the very back. Did you ever go hit the absolute back of the ball or slightly inside the ball? 
just, just I, I wasn't that good. I just went ahead and hit it. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. I remember asking you. We were turning. Oh, I really? said, I said, Jack, do you where do you look at the the ball when you hit it? And you said, I don't even see the ball when I hit it. Oh, it's just there. Just there. Just collect it along the way. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of I kind of like that that like that kind of feeling. Um, Let's jump to, you know, you're incredible. You, you threw out a quote, you were playing with a young lad, um, Frank Kennedy, and um, here in, in town. You know, you won 18 majors, but you finished second 19 times. And you said to him, who do you think is the, the worst choker on tour? Can I you did. Know? You said to him, you asked him, and he said, ah, oh, you tried to think of a name. And you said... How can, you, how can you lose 19 times when you're there? <laughs> Only won 18. <laughs> she, you won 18, second 19. You were third. I, I looked at, mm -hmm. You were third four times. You were tied third four times as well. So uh, 45. Well, I had more than that in three, three more, but that's all right. Was it more tied thirds? Or thirds? Well, thirds, I was maybe, I don't know. So what's your grand total? 45 I, I, and tied the top I, three? I thought I got no to 45. Mm, more, more. I have no idea, really. Yeah. Maybe eight or ten, I think, thirds. As we said. But anyway, there, there, and again, that's that's good. So any of any of those? Two people, so two any, people. I know I spoke to you a long time. You said I should have won twenty four. Is a couple of them irk you? Those seconds, those nineteen um, seconds. Well, I, I I look at it this way: the one, the first one that I finished second major was uh, uh, at Cherry Hills. I was very first. You're amateur. Yeah, I was an amateur. Yeah. Twenty years old, <laughs> and uh, I had I had a uh, lead going the last nine holes. I had a lead with seven holes to play. And I played the last th six holes three over. Okay. And Arnold won the tournament and beat me by a couple of shots. And, of course, I always told Palmer, I said, if I hadn't shot 39 the last nine holes, nobody had ever heard of you. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, then he Sweet. turned around to me and he said, well, if I had three putted nine times at Oakmont, nobody had ever heard of you. you. <laughs> so we had, we, had, we, had, we had a pretty good yeah. thing back and forth. But anyway, the, 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 well, that nine holes that I shot 39, I did so many dumb things in that nine holes. Mm. That, you know, when I got done with it, Dan Jenkins was saying to Hogan, who I played with, he said, you know, he says, Ben, I'm so sorry. He says, Jesus, don't worry about me. He says, I played with a young kid yesterday. He said, if he'd have known how to win, would have won by mm, several shots. Yeah, but that. Meaning, yeah. I didn't know how to win. Absolutely. And so the best thing that ever happened to me was not to win that exactly. golf tournament. Exactly. Because yeah. I learned from it. Absolutely. And then, and then I did. I, I got a little bit better with some things, but then I then I did the same thing again at a little bit at Lytham in '63. Okay. Yeah. I had a I had a two shot lead with two holes to play. Wow. And I I, I drove it up three wood on, on seventeen. I had I had two twelve to the hole. Oof. Yeah. Okay. A little wind in my face. And I saw so I hit I had a two iron. Two iron yeah. Jimmy Jimmy Dickinson was caddy for me. It was the first tournament Jimmy oh, yeah. caddy for okay. me. He said, Jack, you don't need a two iron. Oh, I need a two iron to get back. You don't need a two iron. Yeah. And I didn't listen. Because all I needed to do was put it on the green just somewhere. Just get it front edge and it would have run on anyway, sure. Exactly. Would run on, yeah. And I ran just over the green, made bogey, and yeah. I drove it in a bunker at the last oh, hole. Yeah, made bogey. Everywhere. And Charles and 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 uh, Roger Charlie Bob, Bob they Charles, both yeah. buried sixteen in part seventeen and eighteen. Yeah. So I lost by a shot. Wow. Well, I mean, I gave that away. But, I mean, I looked at it and I said, why in the world would you do what you did at 17? Put yourself in that position. Yeah. Short of the hole's perfect. Get on front edge. Yeah. And why in the yeah. world would you ever take a driver at 18? 18, yeah. I mean, have you ever played driver at that hole? No. You go to, well, you've been, now, there's so many bunkers, you, you even contemplated hitting into the left rough to oh, stay away you? from the bunkers. Well, I did moons ago. Yeah, I mean, they put more bunkers in. Yeah. But, I mean, now, I, the last time I played, I am playing more than one yeah. iron since then. Yeah, exactly. And so... You know, you learn from those silly mistakes, yeah. and you try not to repeat them. Do you repeat them sometimes? Sure, sure you do, yeah, but you yeah. you, you yeah. certainly try not to. You got to learn to win. It's simple as that. Um, you know, you you were brilliant at strategy. I mean, one of the cool things I was looking, we both won. Well, we won fifteen majors at Augusta, Muirfield, and St Andrews between the pair of us. That's not bad. That's no, right. it's that bad. Yeah, and. And I was reading, you know, when you came over in 66, it was burnt, wasn't it? I'm sorry, Murphy was absolutely burnt, and you hit a one-iron everywhere. 
It wasn't burned in 66. No, no in 66. Okay. 66. Well, I heard the rough was like that. Oh, yeah. I mean, the fairways were hard and fast, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. But but the rough but, was like yeah. that. Okay. Off the edge of the fairway. Yeah. I always said, I said, if you went off the fairway and you put your bag down, you might lose your bag. <laughs> and, if you, and if you had a short caddy, you'd lose him too. <laughs> so anyway, but uh, no, Muirfield was really difficult. Yeah. And I hit, uh, I hit 17 drivers that week. There you go. Yeah. I planned on hitting 16. Okay. And the 17th one almost cost me the tournament. Wow. At the fifth, 14th hole, par four. Yeah. I had played three wood every week, kept short of that little oh, the bunkers. last bunker. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that day, I felt like there was enough wind I could hit driver. And I drove it right in that bunker. bunker. Yeah. And, I, and I made bogey, obviously. And it almost cost me three. I had to, yeah. you know, I, yeah. I had to finish, I guess I finished par, pretty, par, pretty par to win. Yeah, you better look 17, yeah. yeah. So you gave, talking about strategy there, you gave me some. I'm, I plucked up courage. You just won the U.S. Open in 1980, and you were walking, and we were at Muirfield, right in front of the clubhouse. And I plucked up courage. I said, "Any chance of a practice round?" And you said, "Yeah." And we went out and played 1980. What a fun day that was with Andy North and Watson, uh, eating ice creams. That was an amazing day. We had three <laughs> ice creams. Do you remember that story? We kept buying ice creams, and then finally it was. Watson's go to buy an ice cream. Everybody bought an ice cream. And then we were done. Yeah, and then Watson <laughs> says, no, I don't want another one. And I said, no, no, it's short term to buy an ice cream. Anyway, so you gave me great advice. You said never play level with the bunkers at Muirfield, short or long. Do not try and get, because they it's just telling. gather. They're like magnets, aren't they? they? The bunker's this big, but the surrounding area is this oh, big. They you. gather everything. Kills you. So work for me. I thank you for that. Work for me at 87, well, you won. 92. Yeah. Tell the story of, of, of 86 again, because you were, you were written off oh. and you put the, and you put the uh, article, you taped it to the fridge door. Well, that was taped the, for me. John uh, Montgomery taped it. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, yeah. He, 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 my, 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 my friend prank, prankster. Oh, yeah. But anyway, uh, I, I got to Augusta uh, that week and my sister called me. And she said, Mom would like to come one more time. Wow. She, neither my sister or my mother hadn't been there since 1959. Wow. Okay. A long time. Yeah. And so I said, okay. So they came in 86. Uh, that, that article was put Tom McAllister's article about you're done, washed up, finished. <laughs> Clubs are all rusty. You'll never win again. <laughs> that was on the refrigerator. Uh, you know, I, I, I had a putter that was... You know, oh, about yeah, the that giant long. one. Yeah, yeah, the giant aluminium thing. Oh, wasn't yeah, it? the huge putter. <laughs> and I putted with it in the springtime, and I was just, I remember I first tried that putter. It was in, in, at Eagle Trace in Fort Lauderdale. Oh, yeah. And the wind was blowing, and I had a putt that was this long. <laughs> you missed the ball. Why? But, I put the putter down, and the wind blew the ball, putter into oh, the, ball, the ball. Oh, you hit the ball. And I hit it halfway. <laughs> and I said, how am I going to learn to use this thing? I bet I was putting terrible with everything yeah. else. Wow. <laughs> I kept putting with it, and I finally started putting pretty well. Uh, got playing the tournament. Uh, then I put it poorly the first round, shot 74. Played a, put it a little bit better the second round, and shot 71. I was okay. Then I shot 69. Uh, that put me in contention. I had uh, I had eight guys in front of me, and I was four shots uh, behind mm -hmm. the leader. I guess the leader was probably Norman. And yeah, he led all the all the majors that year. Yeah, that's right. And so uh, my son Steve calls me on Sunday morning. And he says, uh, what do you think, Pops? And I said, well, if Steve Rice says, I think 66 will tie, 65 I'll win. Go shoot it. That's the exact number I got in mind. So I got that. He sort of yeah, threw that 65 yeah, at me. Got, yeah. I reached in my suitcase that morning, and I was looking, rummaging around for something to wear, and I saw this yellow shirt. Yeah. And it's a long story, but this young, that, yeah. the young man the young lad, who, yeah. who died of uh, Ewing sarcoma had told me, he says, he wore a lucky yellow shirt for me. So I wore yeah. a lucky yellow shirt quite often. Yeah. Never told the story until after yeah. the Masters. Yeah. But he died in 1971. Now, this is 15 years later. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. okay. It's 15 years later, and I looked at it. Yellow <laughs> shirt, I said, Barbara, I said, what do you think Craig will like? think? Do you think he'll like this? So I wore the yellow shirt for Craig that day. All kinds of things came yeah. around. Amazing. Though. And I was, I mean, I was so pumped up because I felt like I had a real chance to win the golf tournament. And then I played the first eight holes at even par. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> now I'm standing on the ninth green, and uh, I'm getting ready to putt my putt, and all of a sudden, 
there's a big roar goes up at eight. Buy a Saris, hold a witch. Oh, yeah, okay. For Eagle. I, I settled back down, got, got ready to put again. Another big roar goes up at eight. <laughs> Tom Kite, hold a wedge right behind him oh. for Eagle. Oh. So now these two guys have moved in in front of me. Well, anyway, I said, so I, it relaxed me a little bit because I turned to the gallery and I said, okay, they made a lot of noise up yeah, there. Let's see if I make let's some. See, let's see if we can make some noise here. Wow. I hold the putt. Wow. They went wild. Yeah. But then I hold two putts the next two holes, 25, a couple 25 footers. Got myself in contention. I made a bad bogey at 12, even though I put it where I wanted to. And I had the ball mark got my, got, or, or spike you mark got yeah, my. You never putt. missed a putt. Exactly. I, did, I, never missed a, I never missed those putts. Anyway. So, but then I turned around and, and I made a really good birdie at, at uh, 13. At 13, par 14. Got in the middle of 15th fairway, and I knew that. And Bias Terrace, I think, Eagle's 13 at the time. So Bias Terrace has got me by about four shots. Still four. You still oh, fall yeah. back. Wow. I might have been before, even after I played 15. Anyway, uh, I turned to Jackie and I said, How far do you think? I had 214 yards. And I said, Jackie, I said, How far do you think a f three will go here? And I don't mean club. And he says, I think it'll go a long way. So I hit a four iron, hit it in about oh, yeah. 12 yeah, feet, so and made it. Famous shot. Made it. Yeah. And uh, then, uh, so I moved out a little bit closer, but then then, then, then I almost made hole in one at the next hole. And I was, you know, I was, I was getting, I was getting, I'm really getting into it. I mean, I made the cockiest remark I ever made in my life. I had oh, yeah. 175 yes. yards, slight wind hit me in the face. I hit a five iron. You can't see the bottom of the flag. Yeah. And I, I hit it, shot, and I just didn't even watch it. I just reached down, picked up my key, and and, and, and Jackie says, be good. I says, it is. It is. I mean, it almost goes in the hole. I mean, <laughs> amazing. I don't yeah. know. How, why would you make a cocky remark yeah. like that? But I did. So made the two. Drove it up the left side at, at, at 17. You can't drive it there now. They put trees there. Yeah. But uh, I, I, wanted the, I wanted the angle. And I maybe hit a little further left than probably should, but it was all right. And I had a hundred and uh, I had a hundred and uh, uh, twelve yards to the hole, and I didn't want to hit it long. I knew I couldn't hit a pitching yeah, wedge farther yeah. than that, and to hit pitching wedge today, hundred forty yards, yeah, but yeah. I couldn't and the then. Yeah. And uh, so I hit it in about twelve feet. Of course, I made the putt. That was the first time I went in, yeah. went into the uh, lead. I mean, that that particular putt. Uh, we looked at it. I looked at Jackie. I says, "What do you think?" He says, it's going to go right in it. I says, yeah. But I says, I think Ray's Creek will straighten it yeah, out. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And he says, you sure? <laughs> and I says, oh, I think so. <laughs> so I, I, I put it as I felt. It went right. And then you could see just about drift, yeah. six feet short of the hole. Just, you see just, the ball just, just, straightened out a little yeah, bit. Yeah. And then and then it tried to go back right again at the end. Yeah. But anyway, it went in. Uh, got to the 18th hole. I played a three wood. And I hit a five iron. And I, as soon as I hit the five iron, I knew where it was. I knew yeah. it was going to be short because the wind hit me in the face. And uh, I, oddly enough, I had practiced that putt half a dozen times earlier in the week. We, our company, and, and, and I was part of redoing the ninth and 18th greens that week. Oh, really? They were 11.5% they were, they were pitch. We changed them to 8.5% pitch ah. without changing what the green did. So I wanted to make sure I could, had putted that putt. And I had, and I found out that that putt wasn't quite as quick as it used to be, or quite as slow as it used to but, be. Yeah. So I hit the putt, and of course I almost made the putt. But you know, then 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 probably the best thing of the week was when Jackie and I sort of hugged oh, each other, walked off. Walk I can't imagine. Yeah, yeah I mean, really, yeah, is... having your son be part of what you what went on that and what moment, happened. Yeah. That was that was pretty special. That was historic. That was historic. Yeah. I don't remember much about that round. No, nine. not much. <laughs> <laughs> Whether you did heads up on your coin or tails, I bet you remember everything. Always tails. Always, always tails. Always. There you go. There's another secret. Always oh. tails and three. And God, three it's always three, heads. Make another note. Three, pe oh, three pennies. Change the tail. Spit three, late. Three pennies. Three pennies. Always three pennies in my pocket. There you go. And they always go. Little superstitious fellas, aren't we? Heads down. Heads down. Oh, my goodness. Anyway. Um, so we've got to talk about the guys now. Um, obviously, poor Tiger. Unfortunately, um, I commented after the, you know the dreadful accident when people were saying, "Oh, he's going to do this and do that." I said, "He's got to be able to walk again, poor fellow." And it doesn't no, sounds not. good right now, does he? Have you spoken to him? I don't think he's. I don't think he's ever going to really play. No. He's going to play the majors. Yeah, and he he actually can still hit the ball pretty well. No, I know he hits it solid, but he, can, but but he, he can't, can't walk. walk. Can't walk. The stamina. And I told walk. him, I said, I said, Tiger, you're you, you're eligible to take a t take a cart. You never do. He says, I'm not going to do that. No. He says, when I get to the senior tour, I will. Oh, 
He's actually thinking he would have to come so out back wants, out at 50. He wants to play the senior tour. Wow, how about that? But he's a competitor. That's probably a secret. That's what I love about Tiger. Yeah. He's a competitor. He loves Well, that's what's so impressive about, about we talked about winning titles. I mean, to keep churning out winning and keep going. And obviously, he was chasing your record, chasing Sam Snead's record. But to be able to come out with all that's going on, considering he's in, been in this era, to just keep wanting to win. Couldn't care less about prize money. No, just that's wanted right. to win. Just wanted to win. All right, Rory. Um, I think I think the, the, the poor Ryder Cup last year when Rory, because um, I've been watching him with, through TV all year, I could see him poor wedge shots, missing inside 10 feet, and you come to the Ryder Cup and you think, right, this week, please, golfing gods, I'm, doing, I'm not doing it for me, I'm doing it for the lads, part of it for the team, and it didn't go right by long, right from the word go. First two holes, I was actually on the call. He had a poor wedge at one, off a brilliant drive, and then missed inside 10 feet, and I thought, oh no, he's gonna have one of those weeks. And so he was in tears at the end of it because he and I think that was like the low of the low for well, him. And then it's and then from now at then on, he's, been he's played very well. Been played. He's got a great yeah. golf swing. Yeah, fantastic. He's got the best rhythm in the game. Oh yeah. He uses his body better than anybody else. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. And the he, he uh, uh, I, I mean I I love his attitude, but I I don't think Roy. Uh, I don't think he has trouble keeping his focus for some reason. Really? Well, the well scar, I, don't, I don't know what... I don't know. With the scar tissue, it's his eight years now since he had that phenomenal run, like comes out a bit like oh, Jordan, yeah. wins four majors in oh, yeah. five minutes, a couple of years on tour, and then wallop. When's the next one going to happen? He's going to win some more. You think... I, I would have thought... I think, I think this has been a good clear out that you go to the low and then he's climbed his way back, must be super relaxed, and he knows... That it's just somehow, yeah. it's almost going back to like you talking about your your attitude, I'm sure, when you played was just don't get in your own. You're so good. You're better. You know when you go to a tournament, you're better than anybody else. And just it was like, just don't, don't get, get in your own, own way. way. Don't get in your own way. But uh, you, even you admit you got in your own way at times. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think Roy just, Roy sometimes, I think that, I, I, I think he just plays golf. And sometimes you really can't just play golf because you know explain what do you mean by well this? i mean oh, well, i look at augusta okay. okay everybody knows augusta pretty not pretty much yeah. there's about six shots at augusta that you better pay attention to your tee shot at two okay your second shot at 11 agree tee shot at 12 yeah your tee shot at 13 yeah and the second shot at 13 mm -hmm. and the tee shot at 15 yeah I don't think 16 doesn't bother me. I, I, no, it was all right. I, never, I, I don't think I've ever hit in the water there. No, agree. But anyway, so those six shots. What about the second shot, 15? T -shirt. That's what I meant, the second shot. Oh, the second shot, 15, not the T-shirt. Second, yeah, yeah, second shot, 15. Yeah, that's important. Yeah, second shot, 15. Yeah, second shot, 15. Yeah. And those six shots. Yeah. Now, if you play those shots smart, play them intelligently, and put them in the conservative side of the ledger, the rest of the golf course is not very hard. Yeah. And so Rory sometimes gets caught up in, in, in just playing golf and then all of a sudden, where did that eight come from? Yeah. And he's too good for that. Yeah. He's too good a player. And uh, maybe, it's, maybe he tries to keep himself too relaxed. I was never relaxed. I always wanted to be on point mm. oh, every shot. Yeah. I think you did too. Oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah, you have to be on point. Yeah, you can't get relaxed. Yeah, and 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 feel good and, and sort of enjoy. You can't enjoy the round. You've got to play the round, and when you play the round well, that's your enjoyment. I agree, hundred percent. So that well, we both. <laughs> when, these, when these kids say, "I'm going to go and have fun tomorrow," and I go, uh, "How the hell do you have uh, fun playing golf?" No, no, it's you, exactly what you're saying. You, everything's a challenge, and you then you enjoyed the challenge at the end of the day because you enjoy. You have, yeah, that's the fun. Yeah. And so, you know, I love, I, I love, I love the pressure. The yeah. pressure is what you live for. Yeah. And so anyway, that's, so, that, that's what we did. And, uh, you know, I, and I think Roy is, I love Roy. I think he's a great yeah, guy. Great guy. He's, a, he's right now in the prime of his career. Uh, he's going to win more tournaments. I don't think more majors. I don't think there's a question about that. And, you know, and when he wins more, he's going to win more than mm. just one. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, he's got to be able to, to not, allow that to happen to him yeah and just I'll, I'll add with augusta if you've decided to fade it to finish to the right of the flag you've got to do that you can't suddenly pull it 
can you? Because the ball lands in completely the wrong spot, finishes in a horrendous spot, and then you're in deep trouble. So I always thought that my secret was, you know, wherever I want the ball to finish, just keep it on that side as long as it's as close as possible. Augusta you know? is, has shots that you need to play right to left. Yeah. But most shots... Most of the face. Most, most of shots it, Into the face. green, especially. Exactly. Most of them, That's yeah. Right. I mean, you go back and look at... Look at, I mean, uh, you know, two, three. Uh, eh, it depends how you play four. But, I mean, well, five. Four, you go up that way. Five, up, up yeah. Narrow, yeah. Five. Exactly. Five. Yeah, you, you go right through the golf course. Yeah, yeah. You, you got yeah. a couple right to left, sir. Yeah. Well, I mean, six is a little right to left. One's a little right to left. But... Uh, you know, for the most part, yeah, you know, into the green. Fades will do you fine. Fades will do you fine. But off the tee, you got to occasionally make a left. As a golfer, just going back, you talked. So how did you get yourself in the, the right state on a Thursday for a tournament? I always thought that was really important. A lot of people think, oh, we start off lovely and relaxed. Well, and, I, but, I, I never worried too much about Thursday. I always tried to get myself sharp enough that Thursday I could go. And if I made a mistake or two, it was okay. Uh, Friday, I had to do a little bit better. Saturday's when I wanted to really be sharp. Yeah. And I felt if I was really sharp on Saturday, I could maintain it on Sunday. Mm. So I tried to get better as the week went on in the tournament. Mm. Not be at mm. my best on Thursday. Because if I was my best going mm. in, and that's the best I could do, I'm surely going to find some mm. of my worst in the next three days. Mm. All right, let's switch to Ryder Cup. That was always a great, great event. Fantastic event. And... Um, let me just remind you, I, I beat you in 1977. <laughs> Do you know what? It, see, I said for years, <laughs> so well, after, in the, I said for years, I beat you two and one. And then after you really annoyed me, it's actually officially three and one. So I, <laughs> <laughs> was it? Yeah, officially three and one. So okay. I, that's well, what I'm sorry. You can, you can have to, that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> no, but, but right after that 77 Ryder Cup, you spoke with Lord Derby, who was our president of the, yeah. it was good old British. PGA, whatever they were back back then, and said, I think you should include Europe. We all know what happened there and we know where we are, which was which was a fantastic decision. You got the do you think the Walker Cup is in a similar position right uh, now? probably. Probably yeah. The yeah, I went to Lord Darby and, I, and John, I took I took I took uh, Henry Poe, president of the PGA. And I said I said and I said to John, I said, John, I said, we've got a problem here. He says, You're now the European PGA. And it says you really need to include the European yeah. players yeah. and have the things. And I said, and I said, and, and, and John says, he says, I agree with you. And I said, Henry, and I says, look, guys, I've sit through, I've, I've initiated this. And, it says, I says, and John said to Henry, he says, Henry and I will take care of it. And they did. Mm. And that's when the White Rider Cup changed. Yeah. Walker Cup. Walker Cup, I think, is much the same. very similar now, isn't it? It would be wonderful to include Europe. So many good young amateurs coming well, through you, now. I mean, you, you kill, kill yeah, the U.S. because yeah. all the amateurs in the United States yeah. have turned pro. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I'm not sure about the Walker Cup, though. But it's... Uh, uh, who won the Walker Cup last time? You did, yeah. It's Seminole? Yeah, yeah. Did they? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, but it's... Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not too sure about yeah. that. I'm not keep, sure that... Keep amateur I mean, I don't, even know what the, I don't even know what the record is. Uh, it, it gets closer at times, yeah. But I'm just wondering. Is it simply, pretty even? No, you. I think it's more American in more Americans' favor in wins. Yeah, well, then, yeah. I mean, I don't, I, yeah. I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Right. So, yeah, I think I know. It's the shortlist. What was your favorite win? They were all my favorite wins. Oh, I mean, <laughs> who's your favorite child? Yeah, but it's got to be one that. No, no. What people, what is, well, what's the, I'm very fortunate. Ninety six. Nick, Nick, everybody will say the eighty six Masters. Yeah, exactly. And I do too. Yeah. But it, but you know. No, I know what you said. But I'm very fortunate when people come up and talk to me now. Boy, unbelievable! It's still ninety six. Greg and I against ninety. Everybody watch that. They get the facts right. A lot of people, I'm sure, they say to you, "Did you ever win at Burkdale?" And they say, me, and you go, N-, but they get all the facts. I'm sure they get all the facts about eighty six. Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. So I know you don't play a lot of golf now, but if you had to play one more round somewhere, where would that be? Pebble Beach. Pebble? Not St. Andrews? You love Pebble. I, you played, love I played St. Andrews, my last competitive <laughs> round. Oh, that's true. Yeah. And I went out to uh, I went out to Pebble, I think, I think it was last year or two years ago. Two years ago, I guess it was. And uh, uh, I went out and played. It was, uh, you know, 
beautiful day. Perfect day. I played yeah. with my boys. Yeah. And uh, uh, Jim Nance got me out there to oh, he did a for, running commentary. No, uh, no, uh, 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 yeah. an event for oh, I see, yeah. Alzheimer's. Yeah. And I, okay. And he said, "You got a bucket list?" And I said, "Yeah." I said, "Right here." He says, "Right here." He says, "Pebble Beach in Cyprus, two days in a row with my boys." Yeah, and oh, that's good. what yeah, I did. That's that was a very cool. That one. was pretty good. I said, "I, said, I don't need to play anymore." No. And well, so, Pebble suits you down to a T. You can fade your way around pedal, I, Pebble. I, Apart from the third T shot, I like yeah. every single shot's a fade. I like I like pedal, obviously. <laughs> when you were a young lad, you loved different sports, your basketball, football, that sort of thing. And then once you got into golf, so that was it. You knew what was it about golf that you thought, mm, this is me? Well, I didn't need somebody else to yeah. throw the ball back or yeah. guard me or or catch it or whatever. I agree. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh it's something I could do by myself. Yeah. And I and I didn't uh, rely on somebody else. I could go to the golf course. And when I grew up uh, at Scioto in Columbus, juniors had to play before eight o'clock in the morning. So I'd put my clubs on my shoulder, walk a couple blocks down a park through a backyard yeah, of. A, yeah. I walked through the same backyard for fifteen or ten years, and these people never said one word to me and never objected. Really? No, then I never met them. <laughs> never. Even. I mean, they, they, they couldn't, they, I, I mean, if I had some kid walking through my backyard every day, didn't know who he was, I wouldn't. There's uh, a blue plaque on the wall now, uh, Jack walked here. I don't know, but I walked through, <laughs> I went to the fourth tee, played the fourth hole oh, really? at Scioto, hit fifth tee shot, played the ninth hole, and got to the first tee before 8 o'clock. Played 18 holes, uh, go, Jay Grout would be when I, there, usually I'm done, he said, how'd you do today? I said, fine, he says, I, said, I need a little work on something so let's go to the range we go to the range four o'clock and roll around junior juniors could play after four o'clock again there you go again and i'd go again i could and i didn't need anybody mm. for that me too and i that's what i loved yeah. about it yeah. it was something whatever effort i put in it the result was mine yeah yeah i thought um peter thompson summed up his life in golf incredibly well he said when i was a lad at this par three was a three wood on a golf course. When I started, it was a three wood. He did his whole career, and as an old man, that par three now is a three wood again. And he, <laughs> and he, and, he just, and that's how he summed his whole I, life. I said, isn't that wonderful? I was thinking, of, I was good. thinking because I it used to hit three wood at one of our par threes when I started, uh, whether I go back. But I, it's <laughs> probably they, it's probably impossible when you sit back. And look at your career in golf, your life in golf. What's the first thought comes into your mind? Um, About your uh, life in golf. My life in golf. What's the first thing that goes boom? I was a pretty lucky guy. Lucky? Lucky, yeah. Well, I worked at it. Yeah. But you, but you have to be a bit lucky to get some things. Okay. You know, golf has given me so many things. Mm. I mean, I married a great gal. True. Uh, Barbara's fed We've been married... Uh, I better get it right. Six, <laughs> 62, sixty-two years, sixty-two and a half well years. Yeah, we've been we've been married a long time. We've got, we got five great kids. We got twenty-two, going to, soon to be twenty-four grandchildren. Gary's about to get married again, and uh, we have three great grandchildren and two more on the wow. way. Wow! So I mean, what a family! I mean, Fantastic. I mean, I mean, that didn't happen because of golf. No. But it, and, and, and to me, golf, that's the most important legacy yeah, yeah. that I have is yeah, my family. Yeah. Golf is a game. Yeah. And, and, and I was able to, and, and we've been, the, the last 19, 18, 19 years of my life has been after, on charities. Yeah. With, or the children's charities. Yeah. And, you know, we've raised, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're pushing 200 million now. Wow. Fantastic. And, and, and it's, uh, it's pretty. It's pretty neat. Yeah. And uh, but that wouldn't have happened if I hadn't made a few, no. those few four foot putts. Exactly. Yeah. And so golf has given me the ability yeah. to be able to give back there. Yeah. And it's given Barbara, who's with her patience, kids, given her the ability to yeah. be part of that and do that. Uh, I've, I've I've met so many wonderful people around Everybody the world. Everybody from kings and queens to good old salt of the earth. Everybody in the yeah. world I've met through the game of golf. Yeah. Uh, it's it's just a game that my whole life is focused around, yeah. and it's uh, uh, I'm just a blessed person, yeah. and uh, it's uh, you know and, we chose and, well, and, and I understand it's a, that it's a great game to choose, wasn't it? I just yeah. say we chose wisely. It's, it's a pretty great good. game, yeah, pretty good game. 
you had a fantastic relationship with Arnold and Gary. I mean, that must have been fun. And where Mark McCormack took... Give us the weirdest and wonderful place that Mark McCormack dragged you to, the big three, to go and play. God, I never he must thought, have gone to never some... Thought about talk about growing the game of golf. He must have gone to some crazy places. Well, Mark dragged me a few places. I'm trying to think what they were, but... You know, nobody ever asked. That's one question I've ever been asked. Okay. And... Uh, I, 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 let me think on that a minute now. But we'll I, think of it somewhere. We'll, we'll talk about Arnold. Something we'll, pop, we'll talk about. Tell us, tell us your favorite story about Arnold. Well, let me, let me go through a, a little bit about Arnold. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 1955, I was 15 years old. I was playing the Ohio Amateur. And I, I was on Tuesday, and it was pouring down rain. I was the only person on the golf course playing. Not another soul. And as I got done the round, I walked up to the clubhouse. There was somebody on the practice range hitting balls. And it hit nine irons about this high. Yeah. <laughs> it just, it just, just, just huge digits. Dig <laughs> and I sat there and I watched him for about a half an hour. Yeah. Oh, really? It looked, like, it looked like looked like Popeye, you know. Yeah. And I'm sitting there. I got in the clubhouse. I said, who in the world is that on the driver? He said, well, that's our defending champion, Arnold Palmer. Okay. So that was my first seed of Arnold. Didn't meet him that way. Yeah. Met him when I was 18. We, we, we did Dow Finster all day. Dow had won the PGA the uh -huh. year before. So they did a day for him. And Arnold and Dow and Dow and the only Howard Baker Saunders, we did a day. And we, on the first tee, we did a clinic. And uh, after the clinic, we had a driving contest. And Arnold hit it on the green. Mm -hmm. I drove it 40 yards over the green. <laughs> Oh, I bet he liked it. You know, yeah, that's right. Arnold didn't like that. <laughs> anyway, uh, anyway, so I, I was kidding Arnold. I said, well, see, you know, first time we met, I just do, drove you by 40 yards. Oh. He says, yeah, but I shot 63 and you shot 67. Oh, okay. And he says, so I think that was the start of our rivalry. Yeah. But we didn't play again until 1962. Wow. To that, that open. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. At, no. at, at Phoenix. Okay. We're playing at Phoenix. And Arnold's going to win the tournament easily. We're playing the last round together. And we walked off the 17th green. And Arnold put his arm on my shoulder. And he says, he says no, just for this, I'm, I'm a young kid. That's my first year on tour. I haven't been anywhere near in a tournament up to that point. He says, just take, take it easy, relax. He says, play the whole smart, make your birdie, and you're going to finish second. And I did. I, I, and I was a nice gesture on his yeah, part. Yeah. And, you know, I could have gotten me disqualified for that. <laughs> but, I mean, it, the uh, we, we played the hole. I made the birdie. Arnold won, Arnold won by 12 shots. So, oh, I mean, so okay. he was going to yeah, win by a long okay. time. He shot 269. I shot 281. But anyway, uh, I appreciated that gesture. Uh -huh. uh, we got thrown together with my McCormick then. Yeah. And we started doing some things together. Our wives became friends. Uh, and Winnie was a great influence on Barbara. And I think Barbara's a great influence on Winnie. And, you know, it's uh, things that we did. And we got to the U.S. Open, and we played the first two rounds together. We, I can't remember what, I think Arnold was, uh, I don't know. We may have both been pretty, pretty much the same score. I don't remember. He may have been 141, I was 142 or something. Anyway, they played 36 holes the last round, and I played with, uh, uh, I think, I played with Millie Maxwell. I'm not sure who Arnold played with. But anyway, we tied. We went to the playoff. Now, there's a picture of the playoff of here's a, here's a guy who's, I've never won a tournament yet. I haven't won a tournament. I finished three seconds in the springtime. And he walks over to me as we're on the practice tee. And in those days, the uh, uh, the winner of the playoff got the purse. Wow, the whole thing. The whole thing. Wow. Not none of the purse, the gate. Got the gate. The gate for the for that wow. day. Okay. Okay. Really. So Arnold walked over to me and he said, he said, you know, I says, he says, uh, you know the rule on the on the thing. I said, yeah. I said, I says, and he says, he says, well, what you want to just split it? And I said, I, Arn, I said that's not fair to you. I said, you know, I said you're you're, you're favored to win the thing. I said that's just not fair to you. I said okay. So then I won. You know what the gate was? Fourteen hundred dollars. Fourteen hundred bucks, which was big <laughs> in those days. Well, yeah, well my, full, my first prize is thirteen thousand. Thirteen thousand and extra fourteen hundred for the gate. That's right. So anyway, and then Arnold, uh, uh, Arnold started coming over and picking me up 
uh, in his plane. Oh, it's nice. Well, but we start flying all over the country. Okay. And, and the tour, in those days, the tour allowed you three weeks of exhibitions. And they considered okay. an eight-day period a week. Okay. So we played 24 exhibitions in a three-week period. Wow. And he picked me up in his airplane. We'd fly to, to Detroit, to Chicago, to Des Moines, to Denver, to wherever Everywhere. we were going. Everywhere. And, and Arnold was great. And he's flying it as well? He, oh, he's flying yeah. it. I'm, I'm the only other, you know, just the two of us. Wow. You sit up front with him? Oh, yeah. Wow. I sat up front. That's pretty and, cool. Yeah, it was fun. We had a great time. I'll never forget going to Seagraves, Texas. And we're playing us blowing about 60 mile an hour in the wind, bottom and the big dust storm and the plane is all over the sky. Jeepers. And I'm up there, oh, I'm like this. And yeah. I'm just looking over, just laughing at me like. <laughs> yeah, because he's staring. It's a lot oh, yeah, yeah, he's just yeah. laughing at me. But anyway, we, we, we developed a pretty good relationship. Sure, with that. We, used to, we used to have a lot of fun together. Uh, we played a lot of practice rounds. We played, I don't think we ever lost a match playing in, in, in Ryder Cup together or, or uh uh, or well, those Canada Cups you won as Canada, well. well. Yeah, some of those. So we never. We, our, yeah. yeah, we won a lot of those. Yeah, and so you know we had a great relationship. Then we we sort of parted ways a little bit when he went to the senior tour for about okay. ten years. And yeah. people said, "Oh, it's a rift between Jack and Arnold." Yeah. There wasn't any rift. We just didn't see each other. Yeah, and so then when I when after I turned fifty, then we got back together, played more things, and of course our wives were, were close, and then, of course then Winnie passed away, but. Uh, uh, Arnold Palmer is a good guy. Oh, yeah. He contributed huh. a tremendous amount to the game of golf. Yeah, yeah. He gave of himself constantly. Uh, Arnold, was, Arnold was an unusual guy in that way. He was the exact polar opposite of me. Arnold would rather have gone to a party with 300 people he didn't know <laughs> than go, go, go to a place where, with some friends. Really? I was the other way around. Yeah. I avoided the 300 people yeah. and went someplace <laughs> with some friends. Yeah. So we were polar opposite as far as that. And, you know, that's why people loved him. He just loved yeah. being around people. Yeah. And he loved the adulation. Yeah. And it's, uh, and, and, but that, that was Arnold. He, he, yeah. he, he grabbed that in pretty well. He was, he, was, he, he, he was just a really good guy and contributed a lot to the game and was a great friend. Sure was. And Gary? Gary's, Gary's <laughs> probably become my closest friend on tour. Yeah, because. And we both got families about the same age. Yeah. We spent a lot of time, to get, we spent a lot of time together. Probably not as much as I did with Arnold. Uh, but as as we've gotten older, we spent more time. Gary plays at the Bears Club quite often, and yeah. we play together, or we did used to play together. I don't play anymore. He beats some brains out, beats my brains out now. Yeah, we came in last fall, and we and were doing a fundraiser. Gary was up in Loxahatchee, and he was really upset that he bogeyed the last hole for sixty nine. I know he wants to he wants to shoot eighteen under his age. Oh, no, wait a minute. He? Yeah. So he, 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 he so he was seventeen under his age at that time. Seventeen. Okay. And he really upset. Later in the week on Thursday and Friday, he shot 66, 65, two days wow. in a row. Wow. He's a nutter. I know he's out there every day. He's 86 years old. Yeah, I know. Now he's 87. <laughs> Let I mean, me tell you in my art, man, I'm going to win. <laughs> well, Gary Player is, I mean, he is, he is he, he, pound for pound, the best golfer that's ever lived. Yeah, I don't think there's any question so. about yeah. it. He's incredible. Yeah. And a nice man. Yeah. He gives of himself. He's still traveling all over the world. <laughs> Crazy, yeah. Yeah, it is. That's Gary. That's Gary. Great guy, though. I know back in your day, you actually befriended writers. They traveled with you oh, across yeah. the world. I'd sit down with a writer, and you know, I'd, we'd talk about family and Everything. things and so forth. Nothing ever appeared in a newspaper the next day. Yeah, see, that's Nothing. A, that is the difference. That's a, oh, yeah. Now, could you imagine, it's a completely different mindset now to... Basically, the minute you, well, your whole life is. The minute you, minute you contact him, it's going to be in the paper. Yeah. Well. I mean, I mean, I think what the one the one writer I don't want to say his name, but with, with, with Phil. Oh yeah. The guy's doing a book for him, and Phil's talking to him. I'm sure off the record. There's no such thing now. No, he didn't. He printed oh, everything. Yeah. He says there is no off the record with me. I said, well, I, I don't want to do a book with a guy like that. Yeah. I mean, I, my first book I did with Herbert Warren Wynn, and Herbert, I talked about 10,000 things that never appeared in the book. Yeah. And, you know, and, you know, I mean, I, you've got to, 
it's, it's a different world today. Do you think you could cope with the scrutiny now? I mean, even even when you walk through the gates, you know, we've got a camera on you, you walk to the lock, you got every single shot on the range is now come pops up on, you know, with a launch monitor. So if you're hitting the, but you're hitting Nicholas, the crap on the range. Well, what happened is, you know, what happens, we were playing for, you know, well, $5,000 first yeah. prize. Today yeah. they're playing for five million dollar first prize. Damn it, yeah. And you know, there's a, there's a well, difference. I know. Well, it's a different. It's, it's different world. It's a different world. So, what advice do you do? You ever get the young kids asking you advice on how to deal with? I all get of them that? a lot. They come yeah. to me a lot, and I just I just said, just be yourself. Yeah. And you know, I think that uh, as long as you understand who you are, what you are, what you could do, as long as you're honest with the press, I mean, yeah. I I always felt like if I treated the press. Honestly, they would treat me honestly. I'm not sure that that's totally the case today, but I think that the great majority of them still have have a bit of an honor code, mm. in that if you you're straight with them, they'll be straight with you. That's where you try to. Mm. You know, they, they give you a hard time, but uh, you know, I just say I said, guys, just be straight, be careful. But you know, if you're talking about dealing with the press. You need to deal deal with the press. You need to give them time. Mm. Don't avoid them. No, no, I agree. But just be careful of what you do, because whatever you, it's going to be in the paper the next day. Well, I think yeah. If I if I did it all again, I'd I'd make sure I did all my interviews. I do all the TV interviews, live TV. You know, even when you've shot seventy I mean seven and your heads off, you still got to stop. Yeah, and, and actually, people would like you more if you said, oh, "I played lousy today, but I've got, I'm going to go to the range. I'm going to try and do this, try and do that." Rather, that's fine. Than, rather than just steaming past them, you know. Oh, yeah, I think right. if I had to do it again, you'd say, "Okay, pause. Just say I'm I played, played lousy poorly. because of give a couple of honest reasons. It might be golf related. Might be your belly might be feeling yuck or whatever. Who knows? You know, that's you right. just just tell these stories. I just sh I just shot a, I sh shot a bad round and. Uh, you know, I mean, Arnold, Gary, and I. Yeah. We used to we used to love when one or the other one would shoot seventy five or something. <laughs> okay. Because you could guarantee that the other two would be at their locker when they got there. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, Arn, where did you get all your birdies today? Tell us about the round. I mean, they would be <laughs> really. Oh, he'd be steaming <laughs> coming out of his head, and then Gary and I'd be sitting there giving oh, really? him. Oh, okay. we did that every time. Interview each other. Interview each other. <laughs> We had That's a pretty special, that. yeah. I don't think I can't imagine it's happening now in the locker room. <laughs> God, some of you. You'd be... So it's amazing what you have on your as your screensaver. There it is, just to remind you once again, 1977, That's 17th your degree. That's your screensaver. But it's today. What well, was this? That was when we shook hands on the first tee or something. No, this is that's the 17th green after we won. Look at that. And the amazing thing is, you're smiling. Who, Look at who, being here. You're still who, smiling. There's Ray Floyd. Me, Ray Floyd, you, smiling. Well, I tell That's you. That's the best thing about well, you, you smiled when you lost. I'll tell you one thing. Amazing. Yeah, I've always felt like I, as long as I prepare, mm -hmm. as long as I give up my best, if somebody beats me, smile on there your you face go. and mean it. The gentleman or gentleman. Hey, I would just want to thank you. A lot of something. There you go. Oh, that's neat. There you go. Something for the low wall. Downstairs, Lou. Oh, hey, and you wrote. And you wrote and look, the my, thing. My, my, all my joined, best joined up writing. Well, thank you. So, a little something in our famous sweaters. This is you, 78, me, 87. Yeah, you're St. Andrews, and me, Muirfield, my first one at Muirfield. Oh, okay, that's yeah, St. Andrews. Yeah. You're, you're St. Andrews, yeah. You couldn't get a picture of you at St. Andrews? Well, it's the famous. I'm yeah, kidding it's you. It's the two. <laughs> 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 thank you so much. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what a treat for me, and I hope a treat for you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. It was fun for me. Great. Thank you, Jack. I enjoyed it.